How's it going, Savage Life family? Looking at Ethereum at $3,200. Today, we're going to be talking about the massive Ethereum scandal and what ETHgate truly is. Now, of course, there's going to be people out there who are heavily invested in Ethereum and saying to negate everything I say or anything of that sort, but I'm going to be bringing to you information, data that has been released, so you definitely take a look at it and tell me what you think. So if you haven't as of yet, first things first, smash that like button and subscribe as it massively helps grow the channel and the community. So we're going to take a look at why the market has been tanking recently and is due to interest rates spiking and hiking. And it's from Federal Chair Jerome Powell stating, quote unquote, those expecting 2021 style returns on BTC next year should reconsider the odds. With inflation expectations rising, it's only a matter of time before the feds end the show. Now, pretty much saying that it's not a good idea to be invested in crypto at the current moment because interest spikes are going to plummet the markets. But the only reason people are expecting inflation to be rising is due to you, Jerome Powell, coming out and stating that you have plans to rise it within the next couple of months in order to combat inflation. Interest rates, all in all, means less people are going to be buying homes, less people are going to be buying cars due to the fact being that interest rates are going to be too high for them to get the loans. So that's regarding the market taking a plummet and the sell-offs that we have been seeing with the cascading effects of liquidations. But what is ETHgate and what is going on? Now, there was a video that came out, so we're going to talk about it, and it's Gary Gensler, who used to be the chair of the SEC, got caught in a private video speech stating this. So let's go ahead and check it out. There has been all kinds of speculation because Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of the General Counsel, have been very public in their pushing back and fighting the SEC on this. Look at their face. That's not Gary Gensler yet, but... Um, and, 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 and said that you and others at the SEC were compromised in this decision. Um, that you had input that was coming in from people who are maybe Ethereum fans or others along the way. I, I get this question constantly. I just want to put it to you. What happened and, and what do you say to those accusations? The first person who can be by any number of different We may limit the size that we unitize the sale to completely interest the size. Look at the step back that he had to take. So pretty much to uh, break it down, what that video ended up saying, it was a recording on, I believe, Gary Gensler's last day as the chairman. And he said, let me put this leg down. If a person can buy with any number of different identities, we may limit, let's say you're a whale and you want some privacy, you can buy 50,000 per account. So nobody scares people with the enormous holdings. So if you are entering and realizing the cryptocurrency world, what it is now, decentralization plays a huge role. What does decentralized ultimately mean? It means there is nobody at the top of the coin, the cryptocurrency, no one person making ultimate decisions, and there is no one person with 80% of the holdings who could control the direction Ethereum or whatever crypto decides to head. But if a whale, let's say a multi-billionaire, someone with $2 billion and they want to invest $1 billion, they can split that up because you can make an unlimited amount of wallets and you can buy, let's say $50,000 worth of E on about 1,000 wallets. That way you spread your money and people think that there is 1,000 people who have $50,000 invested instead of just realizing that it's one person with 1,000 accounts. Now this truly affects decentralization and this truly affects securities. So let's go ahead and hop into that. Now the SEC chair Gary Gensler was interviewed on CNBC and they asked him this question. Your view of whether Ethereum is a security or not, I think you've actually suggested it isn't, but then why you believe that Ripple is a security. I know there's an ongoing uh, lawsuit related to Ripple, but. Could you speak to the Ethereum issue? Uh, Andrew, uh, just to have a little fun with you, refer back to my earlier question. I'm not going to speak to any one matter. And so your listeners understand it. 
I'm the chair of a five-member commission that's also a civil law enforcement agency. And so we don't get involved in, in these types of public forums talking about any one uh, project, one uh, possible uh, circumstance and give legal advice over the, uh, the airways that way. Uh, but again, let me talk about more generically the overall market. If you're raising money from the public and the public is in anticipation of profit based upon that promoter, sponsor, that group's efforts, that's within the securities laws. So tell me, how is Ethereum not considered a securities? So EFGATE is what the media outlets are pushing currently as a conspiracy theory that Ethereum received a free pass from regulators. Now I'm saying quote unquote conspiracy theory because they did receive a free pass from regulators if you look at the factual evidence. Due to the fact that the Securities and Exchange Commissions, otherwise known as the SEC, allowed Ethereum to move ahead while doing out harsher treatment to XRP and Ripple. If you guys didn't know, Ripple is currently still ongoing a lawsuit from 2020 from the SEC for raising $1.3 billion through an unregistered ongoing digital asset securities offering, sort of similar to what Ethereum did back in 2015 or 2014 when the ICO was made for Ethereum. Now, the links to the SEC officials who made the decision and them being paid millions by law firms representing Alliance is clearly not a whim and they have to be investigated. But this is currently being brushed off for reasons being that many of the allegations revolve around insider dealings early on when Ethereum traded on $1 or under $1. It's not the same now as Ethereum is a $400 billion asset. But I believe without this huge spark, Ethereum wouldn't be where it is now. And for those claiming that Ethereum Foundation is based in Switzerland because of the predictable crypto regulations, they didn't get a free pass from SEC because they are outside of SEC jurisdiction. That's actually false information due to the fact that Ethereum is sold on US exchanges and you're able to purchase it here without having to be on a VPN. So this does fall under regulation and this does fall under SEC jurisdiction. But of course, all in all, they just get a slap on the wrist due to the millions of dollars they've received from the foundation. So if you look at the definition of a security, a security is a financial instrument, typically any financial asset that can be traded. Can Ethereum be traded? Yes. Is it a financial instrument? Yes. Does it fall under a security? Yes. But the SEC says that it does not as well as Bitcoin. Every other crypto that has been coming out is pretty much falling under a security and that's where the regulations are putting their ban hammer on. So the reason this is big is because it's not fair and clearly the only ones that are benefiting from this are the individuals who, that got into Bitcoin and Ethereum extremely early and the individuals that knew that the regulators were not going to drop the hammer on Ethereum. So you guys, let me know what you think down below in the comment sections. If you like this video, smash that like as it massively helps with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Later.